Hi, we're going to work at some of the concepts from chapter 19 today, um, Thermodynamics of Steam. There's a worksheet that's available on Blackboard for you if you would like to download it if you haven't done it already, um, so you can work along with me. Um, first thing that we want to just cover is some of the concepts and terms that come up with Steam. So one of the things that we want to think about is what happens as we add heat to um, water, ice, uh, steam, in terms of changes. So if we're considering um, that we have some ice, and if we add in some heat to it, uh, it's going to melt and come up bottle of water, and if we continue to add heat to it, uh, eventually what's going to happen is it's going to turn into uh, some steam. And so our progression from going from ice to liquid to steam, um, what we're interested in is what happens to temperature. So what I've got is a graph here, temperature versus heat at it. Uh, pause the video at this point and see if you can imagine what the, the graph is going to look like. So if we think about what happens is um, we're going to start out with some ice that's below the, the melting point. Um, what will happen is we'll have to heat it up a bit to get to the melting point. Uh, we'll then need to add in some heat to melt it. What we have is essentially a constant pressure that happens during that transition. We're now at the point of having liquid. We're going to have to heat up the liquid and it's going to gain some temperature. We're going to boil the liquid. Uh, the liquid stays at constant temperature as it boils and then eventually once it becomes all steam I can heat it again. So if I look at what's happening inside there, um, well, here's where I have just ice. Here I have ice that is in the process of melting. So I've got a puddle of, puddle of water around it. Uh, over here I've now melted it all and all I've got is a puddle of water. Here what I've got is a puddle of water and I have some steam that's starting to be produced. So I'm starting to make some make some steam. Um, over here uh, is I'm now superheated and I'm at the point where I've all only got steam. So, so all that exists is steam. So you can see there's a few distinct regions. I've got regions here. And I've got a sort of a distinct change here. A distinct change here, and I've got a distinct change here. Um, first of all, what we see is that we've got only one phase. Okay, a phase is a state of matter, so solid, liquid, gas. In this case, um, we have ice, we have our liquid water, we have steam. Um, and so, in areas where my temperature goes up, I've only got one phase that exists. In areas where my temperature stays stable, uh, I have two phases, mixed phase. So one phase, two phase, one phase, two phase, one phase. Temperature goes up, temperature stays constant, temperature goes up, temperature stays constant, temperature goes up. So I have two distinct regions that, that exist and each one, um, well, there's a couple different phenomenons that's happening. So I have the area which I'd consider to be my phase change. Or I have multiple phases, so two phases. Ice and liquid, liquid and steam. Um, we can see that temperature is constant.
one of the things that happens with this is that we consider that the heat that we put in, we can't see a change. Okay, it's deemed to be hidden. And so there's a term that is used that has the equivalent of hidden. And what that's known as is latent heat. Latent heat means hidden heat. Uh, it's heat that doesn't show up as change of temperature. And the latent heat is what we add in during a phase change. The opposite is when we have single phase heat. And during a single phase heating, what happens is T increases. And the term that goes with that is that we can sense that the heat being added, temperature goes up. And the term that's used for that is sensible heat. So heat that we add in while a phase change is occurring is hidden, doesn't show up as a ch temperature change, and it's deemed to be latent heat. Single phase, where we have temperature that goes in and the, we see that change, uh, is deemed to be sensible heat, or we can sense it. So these guys are, are hidden. This guy down here is, we can sense this. If we think about what's happening during the phase change and the heating process, uh, think of water molecules, right? They've got some energy to them. And when I add in more energy to them, they tend to move and shake and rotate and bounce around and they collide with each other. And so when we have this energy that keeps being added, these guys tend to shake more and more and more and more. And at some point they get enough energy in them that when they collide, they're going to be able to separate and I get a phase change that occurs. So the movement of these molecules is what we sense as heat so or temperature. So when we measure temperature, what we're measuring is the average movement of all these molecules. And so when we get to the point where they have enough energy in them and enough movement that they're just ready to bounce and escape, um, we get to the point where we have a phase change. And so any more heat that we put in doesn't show up as additional movement. It allows some of these molecules to escape from the mix. And so what we get is a phase change that occurs. So if we look at what happens on our graph uh, of temperature versus the heat that I put in, well, what happens is I get a region here where I have my sensible heat that's added in. And what this does is it causes a temperature change. The molecules are, are increasing in their activity. I get to a point here where all of a sudden I can't put in any more sensible heat. This point here is the point what I consider to be saturated. And if I think about what the term saturated means, if I went outside on a rainy day and I, and I said, oh, my clothes are saturated, it means they can't hold any more water. Well, when I talk about heat it's, and I say saturated, it means it can't hold any more sensible heat. And so when I get to the point of saturation, what I get is any additional heat I put in goes into latent heat. And so I've got a, a region where it's latent heat. And what I'm doing is I'm switching from being liquid to steam. And the further I go along this, this uh, pathway, the more steam I produce and the less liquid I have left over until I've evaporated all of the liquid. And then at that point, I'm no longer saturated liquid and I can increase my temperature again because now I'm adding sensible heat to the steam. So in this phase, what I have is, is liquid. I have a mixture. As I move to the right, my mixture turns more and more to steam. And then 
in here, what I have is steep. So if I look at a question about calculating how much latent heat would be needed, so instead of just looking at general graphs, um, I've got a pot of water on the stove, and what I want to do with it is, um, here's my pot of water, right? and I'm adding in some heat to it, and eventually I want the, the water that's inside here to turn into, into steam. All right, so what do we need to be able to figure this out? Well, I need to be able to quantify how much energy do I need to put into water in order for it to change phases. And what I have is a quantity, a constant, that's known as the latent heat of vaporization. And what this is, is uh, a value that you can find out of your academic supplement. So if we take a look at our academic supplement, um, down around page uh, 21 in this version, um, what you have is a section on oops, thermodynamics, and a little bit down, what you have is this section on latent heat. And we can see down here, what we have is the latent heat of steam from and at 100 degrees Celsius. So if it's at 100 degrees Celsius and it's changing phase, meaning it's sitting at about one atmosphere, what we normally think water boils at, uh, it's going to take 2257 kilojoules per kilogram of water to evaporate. So if I looked at this, how much latent heat would be needed? Um, what I have is I have this latent heat, um, 2257, um, basically the heat that would be needed is going to be equal to the mass times the latent heat. And so I have 8.3 kilograms. And I have 2257 units, kilojoules, of heat required per kilogram in order to evaporate. And so if I calculate that out, um, what I get is 18733 uh, kilojoules of heat. So kilograms would cancel out, and I would just be left with kilojoules. So I could quantify how much heat was actually needed to be put into the pot in order for all of that water to have a phase change.